Hello my siblings in Christ, I'm Boyan and today we are discussing pews. Pew pew pew! Yes, those long benches in churches. No, there is no plot twist to this episode, this is all there is to it. So, pews! Phew. What an interesting history of development these fixtures have. In fact, in the mind of a westerner, it is one of the very things that defines a worship space. Except that, when compared to the entire time Christianity was around, pews are a bit of a recent development. Let's start with history, yay! Sitting and worship generally didn't really jive with Christians for a long, long time. In fact, for the first 13 centuries of Christianity, there were next to no permanent seating fixtures in church building. The reason for that is simple. Worship was about, well, worship, it was about prayer. Yes, there were sermons, but prayer was emphasized during worship and one does not sit during prayer. This claim might take you by surprise, but just stay with me. For now, take my claim at face value. People did not sit during prayer. All art that indicates prayer shows the figure standing, generally with their hands outstretched towards the heavens. Now, there were notable exceptions to this. For certain prayers, especially for the reading of the Psalms, people could sit. In the Orthodox Church, the Psalter is divided into 20 sections, called katismata, which means sitting. The monks would sit while the Psalter was read. However, the prayer called Ekatist, meaning non-sitting, a hymn in honor of the Mother of God, was always sung while standing. Of course, there were probably some sitting arrangements for the elderly and the pregnant, but these weren't the neatly stacked pews, but more like benches along the walls. Another notable exception to the standing rule is the clergy. Priests and bishops sit during different parts of the service in order to signify their teaching authority. In England, a curious feature on the church chairs appears. A misericord, meaning mercy, a small protrusion, generally carved, upon which one can lean in order to reduce the strain on the legs. So time passes, these knees are cracking and art portrays pewless masses. But then, something happens. Protestant Reformation. Homily is given a much more prominent place during worship, and there is a cool thing with homilies. You can sit during them. And people did sit. Oh boy, did they. That is when the first actual pews appeared, and they were strongly associated with Protestantism, whereas ye olde wall benches were associated with Catholicism. So how did pews appear in Catholic churches? Well, it's anyone's guess. But if I had to, well, guess, it is 16th century papacy we're talking about. Catholicism will do anything, and I mean anything, to convert people short of selling its own soul to the devil, and sometimes even that, if contemporary Protestant propaganda is to be believed. So, as Catholicism is fighting Protestantism in a final showdown atop of a picturesque clock tower, as lightning flashes around them, Catholicism pulls out the old trustworthy, we are not so different, you and I, as well as the classic, pews and benches are sides of the same coin. So, pews start appearing in Catholic churches too. They started to get more elaborate, too. Small nooks where Bibles and missals and hymnals and pamphlets are added. Kneelers are installed for those extra special moments. Certain churches had box pews, which were enclosed areas, generally for a single family, the fancier even having their own little furnaces. Some pews would have pew deeds, indicated who donated the specific pew, but more importantly, indicating that the generous donor would always have a guaranteed place to sit. It goes without saying that more expedient and generous donors would have the pews that were more to the front, and in a parish, the closer you are to the altar, the higher your position is. According to the classic gospel verse, the last will be last and the first first. I mean, I think that is how it goes, I can't hear properly, and I always sit in the last pew because I can't afford to sit closer. But if you go over to Patreon and pledge, or go to Selfie to buy our merch, Maybe I can move up the social ladder, draw closer to the altar, and hear better, thus allowing thousands of other people to gain access to these videos explaining Christianity absolutely free. Unless you are a donor, of course. Then it isn't free, it costs you money. I should really take up a PR course. Anyway, what was I talking about? Ah yeah, donors. An interesting sub-industry of tithing developed, called pew rental. Don't want to donate an entire pew? then simply rent one out. That is how a lot of churches collected money. 
It was, of course, controversial as all hell. Eventually, the practice died out. So, how did the pews appear in Orthodox churches? The same way they did in synagogues, under the influence of Western Christians. Mind you, it affected mostly the Greek-led patriarchates, as Slavs are the sole bulwarks against the onslaught of the Pupocalypse. To quote my iconography teacher, us Serbs always must associate some torment with going to the church, so we immediately see anything resembling ease and comfort in church with instant distrust. Now, in countries with a large Catholic and Protestant population, it isn't at all rare to see an Orthodox church with pews, regardless of its hierarchical allegiance. This is because the Orthodox will buy a church from Catholics or Protestants, and simply retain the pews. Why? Listen, guys. I know each one of you has this big, annoying project you have been putting off for years. We all have a basement, an attic, a garage, or a shed that we need to clean up. Some of you worst offenders out there still have their Christmas trees up. And I'm sick of pretending not to know about it. Pews in a lot of these Orthodox churches are like that. They are simply too big of a bother for the priest to remove. If I were a priest with a pewy church, I would want to have the pews removed. But it would simultaneously be the last thing I ever do. If I ever do it. Additional issues arise in ethnic parishes. Ethnic parishes become hubs for people from ye old countries from overseas. And very, very often, people who attended the parish weren't really churchgoers in the old country. Now, the church becomes a portal to the old world, with one glaring difference. It is so much comfier now. As for the standard issue Orthodox Church, there are no pews. We have what are called katismata or stasidia, these are plural which are chairs lining up the walls with very raised handrests, and with the seat being somewhat short and reminiscent of the English Misericord. These are generally used for people who can't stand the liturgy. I mean, who can't stand during the liturgy. Okay, up to this point I have a low to high key insinuated that the pews are not a good thing. They're really not. See, Orthodox Christianity sees prayer as psychosomatic. If you're not into big words, that means that prayer involves your soul, mind, and body. Sitting is a posture for relaxation, and in the presence of a king, one simply does not sit. What's more, prayer while standing has so much more to do than mere respect for God. It shows us that we rise together with Christ. Our own posture is an icon of that greatest miracle in the world. Lastly, our standing shows our royal priesthood, for in the same way the priest stands before the holy table, so too we stand. For we intercede and offer before the table through the priest and the priest through us. All of this we show through standing. Now, these were the positive aspects of why we stand, but let us focus on the negatives of the pews. Simply put, worship isn't a theater. The whole of you should be involved. The priest isn't standing back there doing a spectacle. He isn't there to be observed. More importantly, pews make a lot of our beautiful gestures impossible. It is not impossible to make a full prostration when a church has pews, meaning that a very important aspect of land is lost for all people who aren't lucky enough to hog extra place for them and their prostrations ahead of time. My friend Tim has decided to chip in and he actually gave me the idea for this episode. So let's hear some of Tim's thoughts on the pews. My name is Tim and I'm a friend of Boyan's, and my views on pews really shifted when I became a parent. Orthodox services are so amazing for small children. They can unite in Christ through the mystery of the Holy Eucharist. They love the choral singing, the smell of the incense. This is all of their senses. And most importantly, it's the tactile one that they can run up and kiss an icon. All liturgies, my toddler will point to an icon, mid-service, point and say, I want to venerate it, and will sort of ask me to pick him up and kiss it. This sort of spontaneous beauty is one of the great things of our services. It's not just sitting and watching, it's active participation, and the beauty of the innocence is such a key role of this. And unfortunately, keeping a small child sitting in a pew traps them. Now, yes, of course, I know they can escape and I know they can still move along. But 
having a small child as part of a pew deprives them of that joy, that spontaneity of being part of the service, of running to an icon when they feel like they want to go and venerate it. When we first attended a service with a friend where there were pews, my toddler was crying the entire time because he kept pointing to icons saying, Papa, I want to go and kiss that icon. And we couldn't just sort of get out of the pew and let him venerate it. It was heartbreaking. The spontaneity of small children running throughout a service to venerate an icon full of love and joy is one of the most beautiful things of an Orthodox service. And while pews don't make this completely impossible, they do make it difficult. So when thinking about pews, can I also ask you, to use the stereotypical joke, please think of the children. Thank you, Tim. What if you must sit? Then, by all means, sit. Use a good rule of a thumb. Are you willing to stand for an hour or more in a queue or in a concert or anything unrelated to God? If so, make an effort to stand for the services. But if in all honesty you have issues standing, again, please sit, no shame in doing so. To quote a Serbian saying, it is better to think of God while sitting than to think of one knees while standing. And finally, there's this take from Smokey's Blanket on Twitter which I found very interesting. My Orthodox Church used to not have pews. Then we decided to give them a trial run. We started getting lots more catechumens. It turns out people showing up to liturgy for the first time out of curiosity were weirded out by the open space and wouldn't return. And I want to leave you with this little Twitter gem. Pews are great and I see no issue in having them. I love how the guy stands up from a pew to sit, when ironically he won't stand for the removal of his pews. So what's the conclusion? What's God's ultimate judgment on pews? I don't know. Relax dude, it's just a bench. Thank you for watching this video, and thank you donors for helping me advance in my pew setting. Speaking of motions and gestures, you should definitely check out this video I made earlier on the sign of the cross and its miraculous power. Bye!